great to be here and uh, well let's start um, behind me you can see uh, the first uh, jacket I, I made uh, with my own pattern uh, already uh, like five years ago and I always use it uh, for my students to have a look how it how it uh, is constructed um, and behind me you can see the pattern you all can download uh, it's uh, the first thing I want to tell about it it's of course a standard pattern and in couture you don't work with patterns you you work with the body but you make uh, you can make a test garment and um, that's the whole case here it's also the for me online the most challenging part of this whole course because I am uh, not right near you uh, because of the distance it's uh, sometimes difficult to help you altering the pattern uh, we can go a long way really so uh, uh, bear with me and I'll uh, see what I can do from a distance send me pictures of your test toile and uh, let's work on it together the only thing is I can't really pin it or of course but um, yeah I've done it before online and it always works out in the end but just uh, please uh, be patient because sometimes it can take a while before the pattern is perfect also, um, the bust size, size is quite important, so please make sure when you chose, uh, choose your size, um, uh, it's better even to, to choose a bigger size than uh, exactly the same um, uh, measurements, uh, because bigger sizes can always be altered smaller, and that's, that's much uh, easier than too small making it larger, that's, that's harder to do. Um, what else can I tell? Um, yeah, the thing is, for the next week, uh, we will start uh, making the pattern in cotton. I have here an example, I think, of the cotton. Uh, yeah, here it is. This is normally the cotton I use. It's quite sturdy, quite firm. But yeah, you can also use an old bed sheet. Eh? It's just just to check how it's uh, how the pattern fits your uh, your measurement, your body. Um, you will only sew the bodies, so you don't put sleeves in. You just sew one sleeve. It, it saves time, and um, first you want to see how the uh, the, the bodies fits you. <coughs> and then you add one sleeve and normally that sh should be enough and you can uh, see how it falls if it, the sleeve needs to be wider or not um, okay so far um, about sewing the twelve I will sorry <coughs> I will um, during the week uh, um, uh, walk through the steps with you this is more of an introduction video. I also will post uh, the, the lesson number one, making the trial in a PDF in the group after I've uh, posted this video. So there you can read it step by step. Shouldn't be uh, that much of a problem. So far, now for the jacket. Uh, what makes this jacket so special? Um, first of all, the history of the jacket. Chanel, uh, Coco Chanel was already 70 when she uh, or in her 70s when she started she designed this uh, jacket it came uh, with a straight skirt as a, um, a lovely um, uh, duo she um, actually uh, stopped working after the during and after the war but then uh, in the 50s Christian Dior came with his, his famous uh, new look uh, couture collection and she saw it and she was furious that's at least what i've read about it um, she was really uh, a, a feminist of her time she's one of the first women who designed the trousers uh, for ladies uh, she used unusual fabrics that were only used in sports or in menswear uh, she loved the fact that those uh, like like jerseys were so nice to wear, light and cheap to buy because she when she started she didn't have a lot of money, so she was a smart businesswoman and she com and she yeah invented whole new uh, uh, territories for women's clothing. So um, she saw in the late in the, in the fifties Dior with his uh, new look and as you might know Dior's jackets were super corseted tight. 
really like this and then with a skirt and it was really back to uh, constrictions for women and she after the war a lot of women had to work because of a lot of men were or wounded or died during the war so a lot of women had to work in the factory or at in the office there was a whole new feminine wave of working class women and she wanted to design uh, something that wears really nice it fits like a glove feels super comfortable and looks very classy instead of again this uh, tight uh, Dior uh, outfit uh, uh, jacket uh, skirts like back to uh, to uh, the cor corset era so then she came up with the Chanel jacket and it, it was a huge success she every time the base is is the same but she designed it in different uh, every time different uh, styles uh, different buttons different galons different trims different fabrics it's it was a huge hit and st it still is it's still iconic and um yeah um uh, also not only uh, iconic by look but also the original construction is really special so i will explain a little bit about it um chanel you used as i told earlier fabrics that are really um, uh, woolen um, uh, tweeds which were used only in menswear for hunting or uh, sports and uh, tweeds are soft they they are warm um, uh, they have a movement and um, she used the technique also new it was used again in menswear but never in women's wear she uh, used the technique of quilting the lining to the fabric directly so um, as you can see here you have the, the fashion fabric but the inside here it starts is quilted in lines with a, uh, with a sewing machine so uh, it can be done by hand as well but um, we will use the sewing machine all quilted to the jacket um, inside there is a hidden layer and that's the silk chiffon of or, or organza and uh, with this jacket I use the chiffon and it's super light it's silk but it gives a, a sort of uh, extra added yeah, strength and a, a suppleness I don't know if that's the right English word but here it, it's it's nothing you don't you don't even feel it but it adds to the uh, comf comfortable wearing so it if you wear this jacket also because of the quilting it feels like a cardigan it's not like a stiff uh, English jacket no it's it's like a, a, a cardigan and that's the whole idea of this jacket um, what I also want to say um, it's a square model because uh, I've had many students when they are making the trial uh, that want to really make it um, uh, tighter to your hips and uh, uh, waistline. And of course in the Chanel, Karl Lagerfeld did that a lot, but this is, we are going to make the classic pattern and that's a, 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 a boxed, almost square jacket. And only the curve is in here in this princess scene but when i turn it around you will see it's almost square and it's not tight so that please keep that in mind when you make the, this uh, um, pattern in the twelve. it should fall like this and um, in cotton that's hard to see because cotton behaves totally different of course than this uh, quilted uh, uh, version but keep it in mind okay so, another really um, um, nice thing about Chanel jackets, she used the three-piece uh, sleeve, which uh, is uh, almost never used, not much at least. It, it's a sleeve uh, uh, that gives much more movement, but in the same time it falls like a, yeah, in, in, like a glove, can I say that? Uh, in Dutch we have we say that anyway um, and there is also um, because of this seam here and here is an extra part added 
Uh, what's really nice, this, this line is uh, a visual straight line. So when you wear it, yeah, it, yeah, it, it falls like it's beautiful. And it's really nice. You can make it tighter or wider, whatever you like. Of course, you have an arm size you, you have to think of, but you, there is much more room to alter the sleeve. Um, uh, originally, uh, Chanel uh, did the, 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 the armhole very up, very high, so you could really swing your arm around. This pattern doesn't have that because it's, it's nowadays um, quite unusual and it, a lot of people don't, don't like it anymore that it's so high in the armpit. So um, this one is still uh, high enough but uh, less high than the original Chanel jacket. So it's a bit uh, adapted to modern times. Um, but I think it would be fun also uh, to make maybe uh, a jacket once with its high, just to, to see how it feels. But that's maybe another course then. Okay. Um, here you see I've, I've added um, uh, uh, um, oh, the English word, uh, fringes. Uh, in between the, the lining and the outer fabric. But of course you're totally free to, to do whatever you like. That's exactly in the spirit of uh, Coco Chanel. So you can sew it on, you can leave it out and just keep it here. Uh, uh, you can place it here at the vent of the, of the sleeve, but you can also choose to uh, leave it out or only do the, 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 the lower part. Um, here I have four small buttons, that's how I uh, also made the pattern. But again, if you have beautiful big uh, buttons you want to use, use three or maybe two, or sometimes you even see only one here. You are totally free to decide what you like. Same with the pockets, we have four pockets here, but a lot of students say, I'll skip the small ones or I'll place the small one higher up. Just go on Pinterest, look at all the jackets uh, Chanel uh, designed and uh, yeah, make it your own. That's the whole fun of this project. It's very strict in how it's constructed, but you can totally uh, be free in uh, fabric, uh, trim uh, and, and the whole look and feel of it. And that's the fun thing. In the end, you will see in the group, no jacket is the same. Everyone has is totally... Uh, on, almost their own character in uh, placed in the jacket, which is really lovely. So, also uh, how many buttons? Buttons. Um, uh, I can buy the trim. Don't worry, because what I also sense often when uh, students are making the jacket, they along the way get different ideas of trims they want. Or so that's really for the last part of your jacket, and we will focus mainly on the construction now. Uh, because that's really something you, you have to do uh, following certain guidelines. Um, mm, mm, okay, something about fabric. Um, I can't zoom in, but I will make pictures of the, the examples I have here. So uh, you can have a better look. For this jacket you can really use a lot. This is like a very fluffy wool. It's lovely. Uh, one student made a jacket, it was beautiful, but totally different, of course, than uh, something like this. This is, uh, this is a, a sample from Linton, and yeah, um, it's a woven uh, tweed. Um, it's, yeah, uh, how do you say, it's quite tight still, but it fringes a lot. A lot of these uh, woven fabrics, uh, uh, yeah, fringe quite easily so that's why we will take like 10 centimeters extra around every pattern piece because um, we don't want it to fringe too much because then we, you have a problem so yeah here all these examples um, wool uh, cotton um, silk blends here also these are quite familiar like really chanel uh, fabrics all super lovely and, and the good thing is also this is a, a linton um, tweet because of all the small um, threads woven you can even pull it a little bit and manipulate it for the 
used area, for example, you can really make use of the kind of fabric you have. If you have like a plain wool, I have it here. It's super, it's quite fine, also from Linton. It's also really good to use. And, and the, the nice thing of this one is you can, uh, with your iron, press it really nice again in shape. Because that's what we will do. It's not only sewing this jacket. But we, we, we will try really to manipulate the fabric so you have beautiful uh, rounded areas etc but that's for later um, i had some questions about the difference of chiffon and uh, organza uh, i normally i started with chiffon that's how i learned it uh, in my uh, first uh, class ever um, it's quite uh, fine, it's pure silk and as you hear as well, you can't feel it back but still you feel the difference if you know what I mean. This is more firm um, and it gives a bit more uh, firmness to the jacket but um, I prefer working with it also, I, I thought about it why, because uh, it's a bit easier to handle and um, with my students everybody has a different fabric and then this always will do. This can maybe sometimes if you have a really heavy winter wool it can be too light but still it adds so don't worry if you bought this it, it's fine it's what I mentioned in my uh, list don't worry it's beautiful. Um, for the lining uh, this jacket has uh, this really shiny um, uh, lining which is beautiful but uh, for the jacket I will sew along with you I got this silk and I'm really um, I know this result will be also very beautiful so it's nice for you also guys to see the difference uh, yeah, between those two this is the horse hair it's like a, a thick canvas um, maybe hard to see from from this distance but I will make pictures we will use um, uh, pieces like this and they go in here and in the sleeve so again you really it's hardly uh, visible or it is it is invisible actually but it gives really a firmness to all the hems um, then let me see here's some beautiful totally different examples of fantastic fabric i mean you can get really go wild on your fabric that's also so nice of this jacket i will use this one um, it's a beautiful uh, woven wool and i'm even thinking of using this uh, black uh, side for my trim but i i'm not sure yet i have to see it when the jacket is ready um, please 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 we're not yet there but i will already uh, ask you i am your uh, fashion fabric with a lot of steam. If you don't have a steam iron, make a, a tea towel, make it wet, place it on your fabric and then a hot iron because it, you will pre-shrink your fabric. If you don't, it might shrink while you have already cut out the pieces and when I, I've had it once with a student, uh, she didn't pre-shrink and she did all the handwork per piece as we are going to do that's part of the process and then she put on the iron and the whole fabric really shrank a lot and she couldn't use it anymore and that's really dramatic so please please pre-shrink your fabric with steam or a wet towel and then a hot iron on it um so okay i think of course i I'm, I've, oh yeah, I forgot almost to talk <laughs> about the chain. <laughs> I knew there's something <laughs> missing. Um, the chain. It's hard online to buy a chain uh, because you want to feel the weight. There are a lot of chains that are more uh, fashionable, uh, uh, fake things that don't weight at all and you really want to have a metal chain that has a bit of weight. I have a few examples here, I will make pictures of it. This is a really fine one, a beautiful one. Uh, this is a, a, a matte gold one uh, with a bigger, um, um, yeah, less finer, let's say that way. 
and it weighs more. So, um, yeah, it, this is something difficult to recommend. You can maybe ask online to send some, uh, maybe 10 centimeters just to test, I don't know. Or you wait until lockdown is done and you go to the shop and try, uh, or maybe some shops are open. In Amsterdam, a Boeken is open and um, one of the st Dutch students had a question. I will make pictures. These are all from a Boeken. I also have this. One of my uh, last Couture Week uh, students here uh, bought this and it's like a chain but you can glue it on and it's totally against all Couture rules. We don't glue things on. <laughs> but it was so beautiful and I, me too. I thought, you know, if you want to try it, uh, do it. It's, have an open mind, let's try it. And she, she uh, glued it on and it looked fantastic. So yeah, what to do then? I love it. I, uh, I've, I've switched my principles a little bit. Uh, if you want to be really uh, um, Chanel uh, professional, you can still uh, do hand sewing. <laughs> But uh, I'm uh, not here to uh, to judge because it was really it added it was yeah fantastic and it has the weight so I just wanted to mention it. Um, okay, here still are some trims, but we'll all discuss it later. Uh, that's a whole uh, really of the latest lesson. So. Um, for now, I think uh, it's been long enough. Um, I will post the first lesson making the trial in the group. Um, I will try to keep the video short. To be honest, when I'm following an online course, uh, I don't like it when videos are very long because it takes so much time. I prefer to read uh, through a PDF or whatever. But I think to combine both is really nice. But uh, this has been a quite long video. Let me know what you think. But I think uh, shorter, a maximum of five minutes per time is really nice. And then we keep it short uh, topics and uh, should be fine. Uh, if you have questions, post them. Um, sometimes I, I miss a question because of the, the algorithm of the group or I, I have no clue how it works, to be honest. Um, so you can always tag me. Then uh, if you uh, tag my name, uh, it will always appear in my uh, um, um, Facebook uh, pop-up thing. Okay, well, enough now. It's beautiful weather. I hope you're all safe and fine. It's a really weird time for everyone. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you can uh, enjoy this uh, so long because yeah, that's what I uh, uh, hope uh, for you. Okay, well, I have to stand up and switch it off. See you later.